What's up, amigos? Commander Jaime here today, and we are doing a Night Rose Navigator Premium deck profile. Uh, this uses Navigator, as you can see, and some of the new strides from premium collections, such as Bad Bounty as well. So let's start right diving into it. So let's start with the big picture for the deck, for the deck concept, and what it's trying to accomplish. Uh, with Premium uh, Grand Blue in the past, with Kakaida Spell, we always fell back into the Obadiah turn, which is very solid. We can rely with uh, Skull Dragon and Night Storm and cards like um, the OG... Um, Columbar, for example, just to extend to four or five attacks and build advantage it that way. And so what Nairos kind of offers actually is having that aggression on grade three right turn if we decide to go first at that point. And then, of course, fall back into Obadiah with you know, maybe G Guardian, for example, or even now with the Bad Bounty. And so one of the things that I wanted to focus is like, how can I maximize that turn? And not only that, maximize new the new Bad Bounty turn. And so Skeleton um, Seas Navigator over here, just like in the standard deck profile, really just helps a lot with that mill aspect. You can rest two regards, mill five from the top of your deck, and it's really that simple yet effective. And so you can get easily get to the 10 to 15 mark by your grade three turn, which enables Night Rose to have some options to actually call. It enables Negrobone, the new retrain that basically you can discard one card and from drop zone, you can call something uh, regardless of grade at that point, if you have 10 or more. And so if we can focus on that and improving that and being aggressive and also being um, effective at the same time, that, that, that's great. And then at the same time, with a bad bounty turn, we're able to revive cards like Skull Dragon or even Ghost Ship during our main phase and be able to have beaters and potentially having a first strike kill turn with bad bounty with four Skull Dragon attacks. So you have a pseudo Megiddo turn, just like I've explained in previous videos and on the blog, is that this can actually be on first stride. You can actually kill, <laughs> which is great. Um, other than that, you just fall back into regular Obadiah. So I felt like that's really uh, a good place for Grand Blue, at least with this build with Night Rose with the Navigator in it, just to have that option too. So we have actually access to another win con. Not only Bad Bounty serves as a restanding turn, but it enables us to have a pseudo Megiddo turn. So we have four Skull Dragon attacks and two Vanguard attacks. And I'll show in this video too later on how that looks like too. But we also have access to the original Megiddo, the ultimate stride. And then we can have uh, Obadiah, which honestly also improves with the inclusion with Negrobone and the usage of Ripple Banshee. So I'll cover that too as I go along too. For the grade 3s, we are playing 9 grade 3s. I know with the standard version of this deck profile, we were playing 6, but I upped it up because Skull Dragon's very key in the premium version. We're easily able to access it, we're able to discard it with Stride, we're also able to grab it with the Obadiah Stride. So, uh, Skull Dragon just becomes very that much imperative, and so playing more copies of it is vital. Uh, so for those that don't know, uh, Skull Dragon is a Vanguard Circle uh, and a Rigar Circle skill. It gets 2k for every card in the drop zone. And so it becomes a very, very big beater, especially with Navigator, cards like Obadiah Milling, and then of course Bat Bounty and discarding cards. So it's just, it, it's going to be a big beater that we can rely and be aggressive and actually win the game for real. And then of course Night Rose, what does she do? Why are we using this over Kakaitis? It's because her first skill and her second skill. Her first skill is that when her rear guard attacks uh, or boosts, it gets plus 5k until the end of battle, and then it's retired. So it's self-retire, but you get power of it, which a lot of your units can hit at that point, and then because they pseudo-retire, you're able to reuse those units during the battle phase, which is her second skill is when it attacks. Kind of blast one, choose a column, call up to two cards into that column from drop zone, and then if your opponent's uh, Vanguard's grade 3 or greater, it gets 10k until the end of the battle. So really that restriction is only for the power up. So if your opponent got great stock or they're grade 2, you can call two rear guards regardless. So you can have multi-attack. You can have 4 to 5 attacks pretty easily by your grade 3 turn. And then of course you have the Bat Bounty Stride, which lets you re-ride. You could extend from there at that point. And what's really cool is that that first skill, because you re-ride, applies to all your rear guards too. So those rear guards still get the benefit of that power up even if you decide to stride into Bad Bounty. So it enables us to actually use Night Rose's skills to the fullest though, which is really cool actually. <laughs> I'm excited for that. And then with Night Storm over here, he's still our attack extender. He's GB1 at the end of the battle. If it's hollowed and attacks a Vanguard, you can kind of blast one and call something into another circle that he's not on. And so that's really how you get to the four attacks. If you call a Columbard, um, the new one, you can actually get to the fifth attack that way. And then, of course, if you go into the Night Rose, you can go farther than that as well. It's just you need the uh, the Counter Blast to keep extending it at that point. So it's very key. Uh, one key play that I do now with Obadiah. With Obadiah, uh, let's say you first tried Obadiah. You Counter Blast one, mill five cards. Let's say you mill Night Storm, a Ghost Ship, um, a Ripple Banshee, and the Negrobone, and then a fifth card. It could be Cannoneer or some other key card that you're missing, Grenache maybe. 
Uh, the point is, you call the Night Storm and a Ghost Ship, because you can only call two cards. And then with Negrobone and Rubble being in the drop now, you can use Negrobone to revive the Banshee from the drop. This card, card, Ripple Banshee, Soul Blast one gets you a card, but it becomes a 12k booster. Now 12k plus 11 makes a 23k line, but it also gets plus 5 from the Obadiah skill, which makes a 28k line. And so your Ghost Ship is going to be hitting for 29, your Night Storm Column is going to be hitting for 28. And then you can revive a Skull Dragon or a Recall the ghost ship to get another draw at that point. And so that Obadiah turn becomes slightly even stronger at that point without committing to hand as much at all, or in in this case, you actually break even with the Ripple Banshee Necrobone interaction. For the grade twos, we are playing 11 grade twos. We are playing four Columbard, four Greed Shade, one ghost ship, one Keen Serpent, and one Cannoneer. And so with previous videos, I said Columbard and Greed Shade are pretty much the core for every Grand Blue variant now at this point. Columbard is allows you to kind of blast one. You can search up to one card from your deck, fetch it and mill it. And then you can call one card from Drop Zone to Regard Circle. It does not have to be the card you fetch. Uh, the ability is a hard once per turn. So once you use it that turn, you cannot use it regardless of another copy being called or used. Uh, just be careful with that. And because if you use it in the main phase, then you can't use Columbard to extend more attacks in the battle phase. So watch out for that. But it's really great. Like I said before, the go-to play is get Ghost Ship on grade 2 turns. Set up the Ghost Ship, get a card back. You could also get a King Serpent, a Soul Charge, and Counter Charge, and intercept with it if you really want to. Or you can get Ripple Banshee. Um, but ultimately, you start fetching key pieces, which honestly help with Obadiah. Because you can say that Obadiah fetches what we want. But ultimately, uh, there's a lot of cards that we like to set up in the drop zone if we can. And so having that extra mill... Uh, that selective from Columbar is very appreciative at that point. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, we have Greed Shade. Greed Shade, of course, he gets plus 5k. If you have 10 or more cards in the drop zone, it's a Vanguard Circle skill and a Regard Circle skill. So you can have a Vanguard, a grade 2, that is a 14k attacker. <laughs> and it's also phenomenal with the Night Roses skill because it comes a 19k beater. The second skill is where you can discard a card, mill two cards from the, drop, um, from the deck to the drop zone, and then grab another card that's not him and add it to your hand. And so that helps with the consistency, the grade 3 ride, the key pieces that you need, fill up the drop zone, discard a ghost ship, go, uh, skull dragon, and so on. <laughs> it's just a really great card. Definitely needed for consistency and also for like heal triggers and ultimate stride fodder at that point. So definitely vital. And now for the, the tax, you can say Ghost Ship, like I said, he's the one you can fetch with Columbard and also with the Obadiah turn to give you advantage as well. And even with Night Rose with Negrobone skill, to, to call this with uh, Negrobone in the main phase because is that when it attacks, it gets 15k and at the end of the battle, draw and retire it. And so that's why it's very key for this boat. Just keep reusing it, maintain advantage and also gain advantage in certain turns. King Serpent is really there because when placed from the drop zone, you can counter charge and soul charge. And really what it does, it enables you to do that in the battle phase, during the main phase, at will. So if you call it with the Obadiah Stride, you basically refund that counter bus. If you call it with Negrobone, then you on automatically become uh, a CC that you can use, uh, or a CB you can use, I should say. And if you got damage tonight, for example, or you use all your counter blast and you got nothing back from that, or you didn't have Grenache to refund, that's something that you can use Negrobone to call King Serpent and get you a counter blast to use. Then you can go from Obadiah, mill Cutlass, use uh, Cutlass to counter charge, and then have a forward attack turn still. So it enables plays. And then with Night Rose, you can call it behind a Night Storm when you do the column call. You can refund that Night Rose's counter blast skill, and then you can further extend with that Night Storm to bring maybe a, a column bard or maybe a, a ghost ship or maybe a, a skull dragon to it helps you extend it and it just really helps you to to manage your counter blast and soul as well because you're building up soul then you can soul blast it with your g guards you can soul blast with ripple banshee and so now your soul becomes an extension of your drop zone too <laughs> so it's just a really cool card that it does a lot of a lot of little things and that's why i still play it it's 8k you can even ride it and call another rear guard and attack and then apply the trigger on it so you can de deny damage for certain decks uh, DI is a very good example. You do not want to give them counter blast if you don't have to <laughs> at that point. Uh, Cannoneer is there. Honestly, this can be either Cannoneer or maybe a Captain Nightmist to act as a fifth Columbard. Um, I know in standard I use um, a, a, a Captain Nightmist as the fifth Columbard, but in, in premium I feel Cannoneer still has a place. Removing key cards like Hanali and some other cards for other clans that actually depend on to make them more aggressive, more threatening. Uh, getting rid of that, and then of course um, you can use it on the Obadiah turn to draw a card and still get to mill like maybe the Ghost Ship to follow up back with the Night Summon Call. And it's a hollow unit too. Um, it's like back the it's like one of the few hollow units that you have, um, but it's a great card still. So.
onto the gray ones. We are playing 12 gray ones. Room had to be made from the standard deck profile, uh, standard deck profile into this. For the standard deck profile, we were playing 16 grade ones, so I took out four. Uh, so I took out one Ripple Banshee, took out one Dancing Cutlass, and took out one Negrobone. And then uh, with that, I replaced it with the Skull Dragons. And then, of course, the fourth card was a Tommy, which I took out completely. And I replaced it with the Grenache from G-Era. So we have had access to recharge, recharge um, countercharge at that point. And so that's how the grade one lineup ended up like this, from having the inspiration from the standard deck profile into the premium version. Uh, the reason because is because we want Navigator still at four. Um, obviously, I'm using these as proxies, so don't mind that. Uh, but as soon as you can see Navigator, the better. So that way you can start building up the drop zone. You can have that aggressive grade three turn if you have to do it. You can have a way better setup for your first strike turn with Obadiah or even Bad Bounty. So really start having some aggro and setup uh, advantage at that point to really go for that long-term game. So that way you could actually win that matchup. And then, of course, Negrobone, Cutlass, uh, they allow you to do... Things from the drop zone, like I mentioned, Negrobone revives anything after 10 or more, which is key. If not, you'll be reviving Ripple Banshee <laughs> at that point. And Callus gives you a counter charge, and of course you can mill, and it calls itself. So it's a card that can call itself to work with to help your Bad Bounty turn or even your Night Rose turn if you don't stride, uh, for example. And it's just helpful in general to be able to counter charge too. So you're not stuck on just reviving Grenache every turn. This helps you counter charge and really sets you up for the next turn if you have it reserved already and then of course cards like Obadiah and Columbar can fetch these guys too as well just to set them up for you to use later on and of course Ripple Banshee Soul Blast 1 when it's called from the drop zone get plus 4 and draw a card which gives you that advantage going it breaks even with the Negrobone Column interaction or combo interaction and after that it just pluses you with Obadiah it pluses you with other cards like Columbar and so on so really key cards though they're very important they help the deck fluidly function <laughs> And so that's why this lineup is like this, how it is. Uh, Hanali might be introduced in here, so definitely try that out for a more competitive scene. Uh, at, at that point, depending on the metagame, it, if it's worth playing, if it's not worth playing, I have no idea. It's just kind of like playtesting with certain decks because a lot of the new support, even like let's say for Harry, for example, um, and even some cards like uh, Sharhat, they're starting to have cards that actually retire during the main phase and it just gets rid of the Hanali. And so it's just like... Uh, <laughs> I might as well use the different car. So that small thing. Let's go into the next lineup. Onto the grade zeros. We are playing 18 cards. We have the Andra starter, and then we have the Grenache from the Giera. Uh, like I mentioned, he's just there for us to be able to counter charge too. Uh, really helpful still, especially if you can go. You can call with a massive field call such as Obadiah. Uh, Twilight Hours is a, another option if that comes up too, and the GBA, for example, if you're able to pull that off early, and just it's just having an access to it. You can call it with Negrobone too, uh, but most of the time you might end up calling um, the King Serpent if you needed it immediately at that point too, or you can call it from hand and hollow it at that one, that point, so it works too. With the trigger lineup, we are playing uh, ten crits, uh, two draw, and four heal. Uh, same mindset with uh, the standard uh, build. We just wanted the access to the Sentinel crit because there's some. Class that multi attack, and that comes up a lot more easily just to drop one card. And also, Negronora RG Guard has access to grab this card, so you can call this and then a, a, a grade one 10k shield, for example. And you have massive shield at that point because we usually got the heal trigger, but now we have access to the crit sentinels, so that's just additional shield. <laughs> so you can G Guard for one card for most attacks at that point, too. Uh, we are playing Chad over the Wild Seas because it's important for us to stay striding. And maybe you want to keep your grade 3 for the Megiddo turn to be able to ultimate stride. Maybe just rewrite to get a protect marker to improve the quality of your hand. Uh, you can pitch the um, Skull Dragons, but keep these as shield too. So it's a very good uh, card overall, Chad the Ghost Sea. And plus with Obadiah, like Solemn Vanguard had mentioned to me in the blog, is that Chad helps where if you're milling the, oh, um, the Skull Dragons from your deck and also the night storms you're losing grade threes out of your your deck and at that point you may sh start struggling to stride and so chat helps with that as well so you're able to consistently stride without paying too many cards to the cost of stride and so that's very key so shout out to solemn for that and then of course we have gushin pg we just wanted to make sure that we had some access to the pg but we needed to make room in the grade one slot so I don't mind having to draw pg and sometimes it goes off in the early game because you can clear your board with the column bar go ship play and so it's more chances to see it if you damage check it or drive check it, and then later on as well. So just be wary of it when your deck's low. At that point, if you really want to, you could 
mill it out <laughs> so you don't see it and just have it in the drop zone grab it with green shade or use it with uh, negro Noir at that point so that way you can perfect guard from the drop zone by g guarding rough seas banshee is key uh with this card is because you can call it and put it in soul and draw a new card um, the power gain is not so impactful anymore because we have so many cards that get power and at the same time Night Rose gives power to everything. That plus 5 becomes the plus 5 for this trigger so it ends up being 10k for example. But what I really focus is some key plays like Ghost Ship, Skull Dragon and then making numbers with certain columns and it just works out. Uh, but with Rough Seas you can call this early on with a Navigator and rest the Rough Seas and the Navigator and then if you want shove it into so to draw a card and so really you just call one card rested it and exchange a rough seas banshee for a new card which is what you want to uh the other thing to worth note if you have two of these and you have the navigator you can call these two rest these two put them into so draw two new cards call another rear guard and use navigator again that same turn navigator is not restricted <laughs> once per turn it just needs to rest two regards every time and so rough seas banshees help with that too just to be able to abuse it a lot more easier without sacrificing too much in in terms of like committing cards to from the hands of the board at that point and so it's really key in that aspect um which is also a card that you can call in the stride turns if you need to draw as well and it builds up enough salt that you don't have to worry about like for your g guards and everything else like ripple banshee so you always have that soul so you don't have to be as concerned with and you can soul blast the key units that you want that you may have written for example onto the g units we are playing 11 g units uh, some of the key cards that honestly come up the most often is going to be Bad Bounty and Albedaya, of course. Bad Bounty, Counter Blast 1, uh, at the end of the battle that it attacks, you can discard a car, uh, 3 cards as well. Put this unit into the G zone face up, write one grade 3 card from your drop zone, and write it as Stan. So that's how you can have that multi-attack turn with uh, just a Vanguard. Very helpful with the Mega Colony matchup, especially since they're getting new support. Uh, they're getting some solid support with the Cradle, so there might be a representation of Mega Colony out there. So just dealing with the grade 4 Ghidorah <laughs> stun skill is just really annoying. And so having a multi-attacking Vanguard is just very useful. And then if you need to, you can actually ride the Skull Dragon, because Skull Dragon... Skill works in Vanguard Circle, so then you have a Twin Drive Beater that is still deadly. And so those Vanguard attacks actually apply pressure against Mega Colony, which gives you a chance to actually win. Um, but outside of that, it gives you the pseudo Megiddo turn, like I was saying, and then I'll demonstrate it to you later in this video. Uh, and then, of course, we have Obadiah, like I said, Counter Blast 1, flip a card in the G Zone, any card, which you can flip a Cyclone. And then at that point, you can search your deck up to five cards, mill it, and then call two cards for each card face up in the G zone, and they get plus five until the end of the turn. So that allows you that first turn, you call two. If you have two face up, you can call four, and after that, five or more, which is key. Helps have that massive fuel call, and then you have the remaining kind of less to use with extension of Nightstorm, and then of course, call on board at that point. Um, and the, what's the cool about it is the Bad Bounty allows you to use the Grade 3 Night Rose to extend attacks as well. So you have both strides that able you to extend attacks one builds more advantage and some decent numbers to have focus for those four or five attacks where this one can be very aggressive depending on your setup and be lethal first stride as a pseudo megiddo turn as well and then also be a backup for mecha colony chaos for example if it comes up um, and then of course we can fall back to our other strides like galleon gb8 one place call up to five cards they get 10k to the end of the turn and they are retired at the end of the turn uh, very it's free if it comes up, since you're flipping and G-guarding with the, the Negronora, it comes up. So it might be an option instead of going into the Bad Bounty or even in the Obadiah. So that's still key. And then the Twilight Narrows. Uh, really, it's there for the Nubatawa matchup, so it helps force retire if you don't want to clear it. Otherwise, you can use Bad Bounty as well and rely on that. So it makes it harder for them to crow you at that point. So that's why I still play it. And Nubatama is also getting new support as well. So <laughs> got to be prepared for that. And then, of course, the Cyclones over here is just flip fodder. Honestly, the only thing that gets benefits are, are heal triggers. <laughs> Everything else, it, it's not a vanilla. So it's really just there for flip fodder. If you want to put with some other cards that have more utility, that's perfectly fine. I just have it there because eventually your heal triggers can become uh, 15k boosters. And then, of course, if you have Night Rose, it becomes 20k boosters. So it may matter. It may not. But it's just something to have. You can use uh, Tempest Calling Ga Gauche, for example, because you're playing the Rough Seas Banshees, so that might be actually applicable. But most of the time, I feel like the, the mill setup with Obadiah is much more key, especially with the, the Negarbone utility now that we have. So that might become something to, to look into as well. And then, of course, we have the Megiddo and the Ballerina, which are the Ultimate Stride and the, and the Progenitor Dragon. Um, with the Ultimate Stride, Counter Blast 2, 
call up to five cards to get plus five and they get the swap ability call for scroll dragons and a night storm <laughs> that's it you know the nail in the coffin right <laughs> and then a ballerina if you don't have any cb it's kind of uh, a good stride to go into and do something otherwise you can um just do uh, counter charge management with king serpent with negrobone or cutlass um the way i designed this deck uh it's easy to able to at least work with one counter bus thanks to like counter charging cards like king serpent and Cutlass, so you don't have to solely rely on Grenache, so it doesn't really come up as well. So, to be honest, um, I might take it out, but it's something to talk about. Lastly, we have the G-Guards. We are playing five. We are playing two Negronora, two Negromode, and one Rectum. Uh, Negronora, like I said, G-Flip, anything, Soul Blast 1. Call two cards with different grades and put them to Guardian Circle. So you want to get that Crit Sentinel tunnel there and a Grade 1, or your Heal Trigger, or a PG, and it's just a phenomenal card. So it's very good, and it flips which helps with Obadiah, and then, of course, getting closer to GBA at that point. And then we have Negro Mode over here, which is basically Soul Blast 1. If the number of cards that are in your drop zone are 5, get plus 5. Then if they're 10, another 5. And then if they're 15, and another 5. So it can get up to uh, 30k shield in total. And honestly, it's really easy to do, especially since you have the Navigator. So you easily get to the 10 and 15 uh, mark by, by the time you g-guard for the first time and if you haven't anything uh foot face up so this card is actually really nice too so if you don't want to use negro nara you could still fall back to this as well and then of course rectum is just a discard um discard a card to draw a card it's a filter if you really need it at that point uh it just comes out once in a while it's just nice to have that filter and of course you can set up your drop zone with whatever you discard at that point in this part of the video, I just want to show up some basic combos that you can have to go to, really. Uh, today, uh, this part, I will actually highlight Obadiah. So with Obadiah, you can kind of blast one, two, selective and mill up to five cards. So I already brought them out. So this is something that I was kind of chatting about over the deck profile already, is that these five cards are something that usually you go to, like Nightstorm and Ghost Ship, for example, or even a, a Skull Dragon. Um, but now we have Necrobone. For example so and if you want you can throw in your fifth card to be a cannoneer or a skull dragon or anything else that you might want like a grenache to the g1 uh, but i'm going to do these five for example so then i'm going to revive them right there so with this you're able to do the ghost ship play where you can actually draw two from this play um what's cool about the negrobone and the banshee like i said you discard a card and then bottom deck the grenache or not the grenache the Negrobone to revive the Ripple Banshee right before, um, right um, below uh, Nightstorm. So you can Soul Blast one and you will draw a card at that point. So the card you discarded for Negrobone is automatically replaced. Um, what's, what this is uh, significant is because Nightstorm is 11k, it'll get plus five, so it becomes 16, and then 16 plus the 12k booster from Ripple. Uh, makes it a 28k column so it really makes a really solid column at that point so that way your attack pattern could be the 24 plus the 5 from obadiah so this makes 29 it'll retire and draw you a card then you just attack with the night storm boosted by the ripple do the skill with your second counter blast and bring back the ghost ship and then of course attack and draw again and then your vanguard of course you want to do the vanguard first so that way you can give all the triggers on the, the ghost ship at that point so that way you can do an easy um four attack turn that way and gain advantage back and then of course you're generating two new cards with ghost ship the one that ripple replaced um uh, with negro bones cost is mitigated that way so you're gonna able to filter cards into the drop zone as you wish to so it's a really basic play but i wanted to point it out because with the negro bone you're able to make a solid column with the night storm without really giving too many resources from hand to just to make numbers and you can improve the quality of your hand at that point so yeah another quick tip if you need to get rid of something and you do have the third counter blast available to you after obadiah um, and you're going to use one for night storm then you can use cannoneer so when you revive cannoneer with obadiah skill it becomes a 14k attacker then you can counter blast draw a card for yourself and then when it attacks, it can be a 14k attacker. So you can actually hit Vanguard or you can hit another rear guard at that point. So some key cards might be in the back row that you want to hit. Uh, a good example is Hanali and some of the cards like Baragios for Aqua Force and so many to name of. And then at the end of the battle that Nightstorm would call back, then you can continue to gain advantage with the Ghost Ship. So you still get that draw to benefit. It's just that the extra counter bless lets you retire something. So that way you don't have to worry about something being a problem next turn. So yeah. This play is going to show up the bad bounty turn with the skull dragon plays that i was talking about 
Uh, so what do you need is two cards at least in hand. You're going to need two Necro Bones in the drop and then of course Skull Dragons either in the hand or in the drop because you can discard them and actually call them that too. The other key thing that you'll need is Columbard actually in the drop zone ready to go and three open Counterblasts at this point. And so this is the pseudo Megiddo turn that I want to highlight and so with Necro Bones you discard your cards so that way you can bottom deck them and then of course call two Skull Dragons and this is your main face though there you go so now you have set up your board at this point um so before with um in standard you had the night rose uh vanguard attack but this gives you an extra vanguard attack with the stride and what's really cool is because you can do it as the first battle so that way you can actually apply triggers to all these guys and then at the end of the battle you can kind of blast one put a face up re-ride night rose right get your protect marker uh, so you break even at that point too, which is really nice. And then because of her second, um, her top skill, uh, it allows your rear guards that attack and boost to, to get an additional 5k. So your Skull Dragons are already to be big from the drop zone that you accumulated with Skeleton Seas Navigator. But also her power up gives an additional plus 5k. And that may matter and that may not matter. But it's still just nice to have at that point. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so then you'll be attacking with the Skull Dragon next, second battle third battle and they both retire at the end of each battle and then of course your vanguard attacks use the skill kind of blast one choose a column um doesn't matter which column in this one i'll use the right one but make sure you call the column bar behind the skull dragon and then with column bar you can kind of bless again to call the other skull dragon on the other side so that's the play that i was telling you that you can just call another skull dragon if you have the other column kind of blast at that point so this is how your setup looks like uh, it'll get 10k from her skill because if you're able to start more than likely uh, your opponent's at grade 3 at this point. So you'll be 22k base and then you do your drive checks, distribute, and then after that, that's already 4 battles. So this would be the 5th attack and then of course the 6th attack. And then they retire and this is how your board looks like at the end of it. So it's really solid because you're getting 4 skull dragon attacks and not only that, you're getting 2 vanguard attacks. And you're seeing a total of 5 dry checks <laughs> so it's really good. And if you set up with an Obadiah turn, let's say first stride, your deck has um, defend because you grab non-triggers at that point. The only thing that you would add is the Negger Bones. Uh, but if you stack them at the bottom, then you're good to go because everything else is a filtered out deck at that point, right? So that's what I wanted to highlight. And again, this is the same thing with standard. So if you couldn't stride or if you only had two counter blasts and you don't have the ultimate stride fighter to do regular Megiddo, you can just not stride, do this exact same play where you revive the Skull Dragons, have them attack first, then Vanguard, and bring the, the two columns that way. It's the exact same play you do in Standard, but it's also just you're able to extend it with Bad Bounty in Premium, which is really cool. And what's cool is that this turn, if you can't even stride, it's still strong because you have four Skull Dragon attacks, and your Vanguard is just there just to have Twin Drive at that point. So, yep. And that's the deck profile, amigos. I hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Honestly, I've been having a lot of fun. I had fun with the Navigator in Standard, and now with the, the whole Night Rose Navigator in Premium, it was just a lot more fun. I'm going to keep playtesting and see if I do some more, more tweaks. And then I plan to do a different build for Night Rose later on, too. So be on the lookout for that. So thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment down below, share with a friend, and subscribe. See you, amigos. Bye.